Calibration of an orchard sprayer. To ensure crop protection products are applied at recommended dose rates per hectare, accurate calibration and correct use of spraying equipment is essential. This short movie will demonstrate how a modern mechanised orchard sprayer can be calibrated before being used in a field. Before beginning work, a number of items will be needed. A measuring tape with a length of 20 to 50 metres. A short tape measure 2 to 3 metres some small sticks or canes to use as distance markers, several measuring jugs, one for each nozzle on the spray boom, a notebook and pencil, a stopwatch or other means of accurate timing, a small stiff brush for cleaning nozzles, a calculator, a short two meter measuring tape for measuring boom height, a selection of handy tools. In this example, we used a sprayer with tangential fan, fitted with injection nozzles of the type Lechler ID90-02. The first task is to check over the sprayer, make sure it is clean and in good working order, with no leaks. In particular, the nozzles should be examined to ensure that they are all of the same type and size. However, in case of orchard sprayers, a different nozzle configuration is basically also possible. The nozzles and filters should be removed and cleaned. The next task is to part fill the sprayer with clean water. Once this is done, the PTO driven pump should be started, with the tractor throttle set at 540 rpm. The valve directing the water supply to the boom should then be opened to fill the pipework and begin spraying. The output should be carefully observed in order to check for nozzles producing distorted patterns, which might indicate that they are worn or partially blocked. Any worn or damaged nozzles should be replaced. Ensure that any closed nozzles do not drip. The pipework should be inspected for leaks, the operation of the valves verified and also the operation of any in-tank agitation. The pressure gauge mounted by the pump should be set with regard to the recommendation of the nozzle manufacturer. See the relevant nozzle table. The required pressure depends on the sprayer type and may vary between 10 and 20 bars. Selection of the correct nozzle's spray volumes. The label of the product or products to be applied to the crop should first be consulted and appropriate nozzles and spray volume should be selected. Crop height and density play a part, because taller crops and more dense crops tend to require a higher water volume. Indicative spray volumes for tractor-toed mist blowers can range from 200 to 1,000 litres per hectare. The idea is to give good coverage of the green leaf area, avoiding runoff. Measuring tractor speed. To measure the sprayer output in litres per hectare, first we need to know our speed of travel. To measure the speed of the tractor, first it is necessary to use a long tape measure and marker sticks to mark out a test strip of exactly 100 metres on a reasonably flat piece of ground. The spray tank should be filled at least halfway. The tractor put in the correct gear for a suitable speed for spraying, normally not exceeding 6 kilometres per hour in high crops, and the PTO pump should be engaged at 540 rpm. You should then set off towards the marked strip, ensuring that the desired constant speed is reached before reaching the start marker. Carefully note the time to travel along the marked 100 meters using a stopwatch or other timing device. The tractor speed can then be calculated using the following formula. Speed in kilometers per hour is equal to the measured distance in this case 100 metres, multiplied by a set conversion factor of 3.6, divided by the time in seconds to travel the marked distance. For example, 100 metres over 67 seconds times 3.6 equals 5.4 kilometres per hour. Measuring of the flow rate of all nozzles. 
Single nozzle output is difficult to measure, therefore it's normally easier to measure the output of all the nozzles. This is also important if you intentionally used maybe two different nozzle types. In this case, it's essential that the nozzle configuration at calibration is the same as later when spraying. Although it is more awkward as an alternative, if the same nozzles are used throughout, it is possible to calculate the single nozzle output and multiply it by the number of nozzles that will be used for spraying after the adjustment of the sprayer to the crop. Next, fill the tank with water up to the edge of the tank inlet. The tractor pump should be engaged using the same RPM settings used in the tractor speed measurement. The spray valve should be opened and then you should spray for three minutes. Afterwards, fill up the tank carefully to the previous level with a measured bucket and determine the volume that was applied and divide it by three. In this exercise, we have applied 53 litres within three minutes through 14 identical nozzles. Measurement of the row spacing. Measure the inter-row distance from trunk to trunk in metres. Spray volume calculation. Having measured the tractor speed in kilometers per hour and the average nozzle output in liters per minute, we now have the basis for our calculation of spray volume in liters per hectare. Spray volume, liters per hectare, 559. Flow rate for all nozzles, liters per minute, 17.6 times 600 over Application speed, kilometers per hour, 5.4, times by the row distance in meters, 3.5. We multiply the total flow rate in liters per minute by a fixed conversion factor of 600. This figure is then divided by the row spacing in meters, multiplied by the tractor speed in kilometers per hour. If the resulting figure is close to that desired, then only modest final adjustments will be required. Tuning the spray volume. Large adjustments. Having measured the output of the sprayer, if a large adjustment is required, then it is likely that incorrect jets are fitted. These will need to be changed. It is possible to use the measured speed and desired spray volume in liters per hectare to calculate the required flow rate per jet. With this information, it is possible to use the jet manufacturer's tables to look up the required jet code and required pump pressure to gain the necessary flow rate. Nozzles with different outputs are usually color coded to aid recognition. Moderate adjustments. If only a moderate adjustment is required, the most common method is to adjust the tractor speed. Speeding up reduces the spray volume in liters per hectare slowing down increases it. The required new speed is simply calculated by dividing the measured spray volume by the required spray volume and then multiplying the result by the measured tractor speed in kilometers per hour. The figure calculated is the new tractor speed required. Small adjustments. It is possible to slightly change the pressure of the spray but care must be taken to remain within the optimal pressure range of the nozzles as indicated in the manufacturer's literature. Remember, changes in pressure can affect droplet size and too fine spray can mean drift. Too coarse spray can mean runoff. An easy calculation can be made to determine the desired pressure. The required spray volume is divided by the measured spray volume and the resulting figure multiplied by the current pressure. The figure calculated is the new pressure required. Please ensure that the pressure gauge is always maintained well. After adjustments have been made, it makes sense to repeat the calibration to ensure that the adjustments have worked. Adjustment of the air blast to the crop. For full effective deposition of the spray in the crop, the air blast has to be correct. To achieve this, the amount of air and the speed of the tractor need to be adapted so that the spray reaches all of the tree. If the air blast is insufficient, then insufficient spray will penetrate to the inner part of the tree canopy. If there is too much air, then deposition of spray on the leaves will be poor and there will be a risk of unwanted drift. With the sprayer in our example, the top nozzles are spraying above the tree canopy. It is possible to close them off. 
Now you are ready to prepare the spray mix. Don't forget to take the correct precautions when handling crop protection products, especially to ensure that you wear appropriate personal protective equipment and before you do anything, read the label.